So I'm, I'm honored and I'm humbled to share my thoughts with you today on optimism, particularly in a high school, um, because we're living in difficult and challenging times, and we were reminded of that yesterday when there was another school shooting in Texas. And how amazing it is that we're here talking about optimism at a time when people are particularly feeling maybe not so optimistic. But here we are trying to make our world a better place and that's what optimism is about. And it couldn't be a more important topic at a more important time. So when you think about optimism, what I want you to think about is how you use your most precious and valuable resource. And what is that resource? That's the resource of time. How we use our time determines our overall optimism. Why? Because time is our only resource that is impossible to replace or replicate. Think about it. Time is our only resource that is not replaceable. So how we use our precious time determines how full our glass is. I'm really incredibly fortunate, and we, we heard about gratitude earlier. I feel very grateful um, that I am able to use my professional time, um, and I've done this by working in the nonprofit sector, helping to make our world a better place through the Jewish Federation of Greater Rochester. And I'm able to put a really important value into action. And that value is one in Hebrew, and it's called tikkun olam, and it's repairing the world. That's what tikkun olam means. And every day, the way that I get to feel optimistic is by putting my value and my time into action. So I want to share with you what I've learned and observed in the last 20 years of my career and answer the question, how can we keep our optimistic glass full by volunteering our precious resource of time. So there are two points that I want to make. One is that when you put your values into action, by doing good things that make our world a better place, you can actually breed optimism in yourself and in others. And I think we've heard a lot of that tonight from our speakers about the kind of optimism that they have because of how they spend this precious, precious resource of time. The other point is this. Scientific research actually has shown us that when you do good things for other people, that it actually physically makes you happy. And I know that's counterintuitive because we think about happiness and we think about what we do for ourselves to make us happy. You know, often we're going to go and do something for ourselves and that will bring us happiness. But the truth is, scientifically, we bring happiness when we do for others and not for ourselves. But time is valuable and it's precious. So how do we determine, how do you determine what to do with your time and how to spend precious volunteer time hours. So I'm going to give you seven very important questions that you can ask yourself about how to spend your volunteer time to bring yourself and your community optimism. The first question that you have to ask is this. What is a reasonable amount of time that I can spend? How much time can I take creating meaning in my life and doing things for other people. How much time will it take me to put my values into action? And it's important to know how much time you can spend. Is it an hour a day, two hours a day? Is it a few hours a week? But how much time can you re realistically spend? And the other question is, what can I give up that I'm doing that takes time away from the things that matter. Because we all do things in our lives that we waste time. You know that expression, wasting time? We can take our wasted time and put it into action by putting our values to work. The second question is, what do I care about? What do I care deeply about in my core? What am I passionate about? We've heard so much passion tonight. We're talking about, and we talked about Mary Cariola, Greg, a minute ago, and we talk about the work of Autism Up and the Equine Center. The people who you hear speaking tonight are so passionate about the work that they're doing. So ask yourself, what is it that I care deeply about? And you know what? 
you can't get that question wrong. Is it that you care about children or hunger or homelessness or gun violence? Whatever it is, know what you care about because that's the place where you can spend your time because it will matter to you and to the people that you impact. The third question that you wanna ask yourself is, what do I want to accomplish and why? Set goals. Think about the things that you'd like to make better and why and what you wanna do. How do you wanna move the needle? What, what is it about that passion that you want to put into action and what are the goals that you want to achieve? But that goes along with question number four. Question number four is, how can I accomplish my goals? And it's so important to ask yourself this question because you need to do some research. Research is incredibly, incredibly important. If you want to make an impact and with your volunteer time to serve the hungry, you need to go out and find out what organizations are already helping with hunger or children because there are so many places out in this world that are doing great things and you can go out there and engage with organizations that are already doing the work. But in the same regard, once you do your research and maybe you find that there isn't something out there that meets your needs, you can create a dream and you can fulfill a dream. Because if you set the goal that you want to accomplish and you do the research, really anything is possible. We heard that a little earlier as well, as long as you have the passion behind it. The next question is, how can I measure if I have made a difference? So it's great to spend that precious resource of time volunteering and feeling good about what you're doing, but you have to be able to measure the difference and the impact that you've made. And we've heard so much about impact tonight. So when you take that resource of time and you apply it to your passion and you put it into action and you have your goals, how are you going to measure? And it's very important to see that you've made impact. The last two questions, question number six and seven, are actually interrelated and they're very important. So question number six is, what skills do I have to share? All of us have strengths that we can offer in our volunteerism that can help. So do you like to speak? Can you be an advocate? Do you have great accounting skills? You can help with spreadsheets. Are you an excellent fundraiser? Everybody's looking for good fundraisers. Do you like asking people to give money? If you're comfortable with fundraising, I can, I can um, find a few organizations for you. But, um, but what are those skills that I have that I can put to use to help connect my passion with action and making a difference? Everybody has a skill that they can apply to their volunteerism. But the next question is equally important. And that's the question of what am I willing to learn? because there are so many things out there to learn. And if you don't come with the skill, I can guarantee you there are many people out there who would be very glad to teach you a skill to help you put your passion into action. So maybe you want to learn how to fundraise. Maybe you want to learn how to speak. Maybe you want to learn how to be an advocate. All of those skills are available to you if you're willing to learn. And if you can offer a skill and you can learn a skill, the volunteer world is open. It's wide open for you to have impact in so many ways and there are so very many needs that we have in today's society. So what I wanna share with you about this issue of time and how we use our time for volunteering and for bringing optimism is this. I really firmly believe that if we all picked our passion and we put our time to the best use possible and we acted on our values, our positive values, that we would be able to impact our world in the most positive ways and make a real difference in our society. And we know that we need to make a difference in so many areas. So not only would it bring us unlimited optimism, but we would make our world a better place. And each one of us wants to make our world a better place. And when our world is a better place, we know that all of our glasses won't just be half full, they will be overflowing. So as you leave tonight, I encourage you to think about your passion, figure out how you can take some of that precious, precious resource of time 
and put it into action because not only will you benefit, everybody will benefit and so will our community. Thank you.